Would you like to know how to overcome crippling depression? So depression is crippling by its very nature. And if you or someone you know is struggling with crippling depression, then please stick around and watch this short video to give you a very good overview of the types of things you need to be focusing on. Hi, my name is Jesse. Welcome to the channel, Open Source Owners, where we talk about what if humans had an owner's manual. Let's get on into it. The first suggestion I have for anybody suffering with crippling depression or depression of any kind is to use this four-part model. Now, most medical systems, most therapists are not using this four-part model. By not using this, you run the risk of leaving neglected areas and then having the depression come back. It's sort of like digging out a weed or a tree in the garden, but if you don't get all the roots, it just keeps growing back. So using this four-part model is a way that we can address all the roots. Where is the driver of this crippling depression? Okay, part one, spiritual, the spiritual domain of your existence. When we're talking about the spiritual domain of you as a human, I'm specifically talking about meaning, purpose, connection with your gifts. It could be connections to a higher power. It could be your spiritual relationship to a religion, but it doesn't have to be. Notice the first three things I put on here are meaning, purpose, and connection to your gifts. Are you using your natural gifts? Please do not tell me that you do not have any natural gifts. You're here for a reason. You might not know what that is. That's for you to uncover. That's you discovering your purpose or you discovering meaning. Now, meaning and purpose are things that change over time. So your purpose when you're 20 might not be the same purpose you have when you're 60. The meaning that you experience in a profound loss is not something that you wish to happen. There is no inherent meaning, but there's meaning to be had from you, from how you live from that moment on. And your gifts are things like your natural empathy, your natural creativity, your natural love for animals, something that is innate to you that has never, ever been covered up. No matter how much trauma or how much BS we've all experienced, the gifts are something that is innate to you when you get real quiet or when you think back over a broad section of time. It's the things that keep naturally popping up that are a natural expression of your soul to this greater earth. Part two, social. This is such a huge category. If, you're, if you are isolated or if you are disconnected, if you have a tribe that has habits that are not the healthiest habits, you are essentially an amalgamation of the habits that your five closest family members or friends share. The five people you hang out with or talk to the most often, if they have nasty habits, if they're drinking fifths of alcohol every day and smoking so much weed that you can't even see through the house because it's so damn foggy, in there, well then guess what? Odds are pretty good that you're doing that too. That's not inherently bad. The question is, is it benefiting your depression? Is it benefiting your mental health or is it making it worse? If you hang out with people who are always bitching about the state of the world and complaining and victim consciousness, well then you will probably have victim consciousness too. It doesn't mean you need to get rid of your tribe. What it does mean is you need to set some boundaries around that tribe if it potentially makes your depression worse and instead seek out slowly but surely and the internet is a thing so you can find a tribe through the internet that has habits that you want to emulate. But the key in the social domain is to not be socially isolated, to reach out and to find connections and support groups however you can do that. This is one of the benefits of spiritual communities and churches and religion. That's why religion persists for so long. It's because it's a community of support that we have built in. That's not to say that you have to go to church to get it, but if you don't have it, you gotta find it. Part three, your psychological health is defined, you know, there's a million things that go into this, but you really want to know your attachment style and how that plays into your history of trauma, whatever that may be, we all have one. And knowing your attachment style and your trauma history is really critical first step in getting yourself psychologically out of depression. What is your information field? By this, I mean what information comes into your brain on a day-to-day -day basis. What kind of news sources are you listening to? What kind of entertainment or music are you listening to? Is it building a bridge for you out of depression or is it contributing to your depression, to your stress, to your anxiety? And the reparenting work is the way out of this domain, learning how to be your own best parent, learning how to set boundaries with yourself, learning how to say yes to yourself, learning how to uncover those gifts that you have naturally sitting within you and expressing them in a healthy, happy way. Part four, the biological domain is so critical to depression. In fact, there is a theory of depression called the cytokine theory of depression, which essentially says that depression is not caused by a serotonin disruption, but rather is caused by 
a high prevalence of cytokines, which is basically high levels of inflammation. If you have chronic inflammation in your physical body due to what you're eating, drinking, taking in forms of medicines, those can contribute to lethargic mood, poor neurotransmitter function, poor sleep, poor mood, etc. And another key feature to the biological domain is blood sugar control. If you're eating a diet, sort of a standard American diet, which by the way, an acronym is SAD, so that tells you something right there. Uh, but if you're eating a standard American diet, odds are very good that then you have dysregulated blood sugar and insulin resistance, or at least pre-insulin resistance. All of that that I just said can contribute to depression. Cleaning up the diet, eating a healthy diet, may not get rid of the psychological traumas or the history of traumas that you've had, of course not, but it will get the body to function on your behalf and all the other domains of your mental health will begin to surge forward when you get that biological system not being in chronic stress. Okay, so what's the strategy? How are we gonna approach these four domains? That's a lot of information. Where do you begin? How do you use these? Let's get into that now. You're gonna use the five minute strategy. Five minutes or less of any skill that you're trying to work on is how to start any skill, how to build a ladder, how to build yourself an exit out of crippling depression, five minutes at a time. You wanna stack new skills or new practices onto pre-existing practices. If you decide that for your psychological health, you want to meditate or do yoga every day, or you wanna walk every day, well then stack that next to something that you already do. So if you always have coffee at the same time every day, stack on meditation or stack on yoga or stack on walking to when you have your coffee. Finding your pre-existing habits and then grafting on new positive habits that you're trying to move towards is a very smart strategy. And five minutes or less sets the threshold of time and the threshold of willpower and commitment so low that I find most clients are able to say, at least intellectually say, yeah, I think I can do five minutes or less of a certain skill. But for how long? Well, for 21 to 45 days, never miss two days if you can help it. You can always miss a day here and there, but try to never miss two days. There's apps for this. You can get a calendar for this. You can have accountability buddies for this, whatever it is. Don't give up on any strategy that you're using to climb your way out of crippling depression, whether that's connecting to other people or whether that's working on your spiritual domain, uncovering your purpose or your gifts. You're gonna commit to a daily focus on that whatever that may be, check out the coping skills playlist on this channel for more ideas. Then you're gonna do it for 21 to 45 days before you say, hey, Jesse, that didn't work. I don't wanna hear that. I wanna hear you say, hey man, I did it for 21 days and this is what I noticed. I'm gonna change that coping skill or that strategy because maybe it's not working for me or maybe I'm a little bit bored with it, but I did do it for that chunk of time and I did notice some effects because that's the time frame it takes for new habits to form in the brain, which are called neural networks or neural pathways. Okay, questions for the comment section. Have you ever found anything that helps you with your depression at all? I don't care if it's medicine or natural or whatnot. If you have found anything that's helped you with your depression, leave your comment in the comment section below. Which area of the four-part model is most critical to you right now? And below this, I just reminded you, it's the bio, psycho, social, spiritual model. So if you had to look at all four of those domains, is any one of those calling to you as where I'm at now in my crippling depression that I'm in now, this one domain seems really important. I've not been taking care of fill in the blank and leave your answers in the comment section below. And if you found this useful and you could use a little bit more mentorship or support, then consider joining the home mentorship program. Go ahead and click the link below to find out more. But as you can see here, we focus on these four areas throughout the year and we continually add new practices. There's a tribe of support. So if you are looking for a tribe with healthy habits, this could be the tribe for you. So again, click the link below to find out more. And that was how to overcome crippling depression. Now, I never promised promised you that watching this video would get you out of crippling depression because that would be ridiculous. But these are some overall strategies. This is the way to, I believe, approach it and think about it before we can actually take those small but steady steps to get us out of that crippling depression. It is possible. I guarantee you, you are not destined to be depressed. That's not why you were put here on earth. That's not what your spirit needs from you on earth is to live your life in depression. We all go through temporary depression. Some of us are more prone to it than others, but keep in mind, it's not your birthright. You weren't born on earth just to be depressed for your whole life. So let's together find a way out of that. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I appreciate it. Take care of yourselves out there. And until the next video, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.